man fell in the hole. He fell in a hole and he couldn't get out. A traveler passed by. He told the man to meditate, to purify his mind, and when he reached Nirvana, all suffering would cease. The man did as he was told, but he remained in the hole. Another man appeared. He explained that the hole didn't exist, and neither, in fact, did the man. It was all an illusion. The man who did not exist was still stuck in the hole that was not there. Another visitor arrived. He instructed the man to perform good deeds to improve his karma, and though he would still die in the hole, he might be reincarnated as something magnificent. Another man looked down from above. He taught the man to pray five times a day facing east and to follow five important tenets. If he was faithful, one day, perhaps, the divine would set him free. The man prayed as best he could, but he was losing strength, and in the hole he remained. something different about him. He called down to the man in the hole and asked him if he wanted to be free. This man lowered himself into the earth, into the pit. He took hold of the man. dragged him into the light. And the man in the hole, who could not get himself out, was saved. Good morning. Fear not, daughter of Zion. Behold, your king is coming, sitting on a donkey's colt. John. 1215 The marketplace is empty No more traffic in the streets All the builders tools are silent No more time to harvest wheat Busy housewives seize their labors in the courtroom, no debate. Work on earth is all suspended as the key comes through the gate. Oh, the king is coming. The king is coming. I just heard the trumpet sounding, and now his voice I see. The king. lives have been redeemed broken homes that he has mended those from prison he has freed little children and the aged hand in hand stand all alone who were crippled broken ruined glad in God The King is coming, I just heard the trumpet sounding, and now his face I see, oh the King. 
king is coming, the king is coming, praise God, he's coming for me. I can hear the chariots rumble, I can see the marching throng, the flurry of God's trumpets spells the end of sin and wrong. Eagle robes are now unfolding. Heaven's grandstands all in place. Heaven's choir now assembled. Start to sing amazing grace. Oh, the King is coming. The King is coming. I just heard the trumpet sounding, and now his face I see. Oh, the King is coming, the King is coming. Praise God, he's coming for me. Praise God, he's coming for me. Good morning. Happy Resurrection Sunday and I uh, hope that you are excited about that and what that means. And um, yes, I am wearing a suit. And um, so I had a lot of people was pointing out today the, uh, the obvious. Yes, Rachel suggested I wear a suit. And, um, but, you know, one of the things about it, we were talking about Easter and why we do what we do at Easter time. Uh, we celebrate what we appreciate. And, and I do love the fact that, um, that the Lord has resurrected. He is alive, and because he lives, we live also. So let's stand this morning. Let's sing um, the glory of the Lord. Let's sing about how that God has resurrected and given us resurrected life this morning. I was buried. Who could carry that kind of weight? It was my turn till I met you. I was free.
desperation, I turned to heaven and spoke your name into the night. Then through the darkness, your loving kindness tore through the shadows of my soul. The work is finished, the end is written. Jesus Christ, my living hope. Who could imagine so great? Come in when 
and death was arrested and my life began Ash was redeemed only sure let's pray together lord god today well we come together to celebrate lord uh, the greatest of all deeds lord your death your burial your resurrection the conquering of death 
Lord, the bestowing of life on those who come to you and faith and repentance. And Lord, we just thank you for the opportunity to know you, Lord, to be partners with you in this new life. We love you. We thank you. We ask, Lord God, today, Lord, for this just brief time that we have together, that you would help us to set aside the things that might distract us, and Lord, that we would focus completely on you and your precious son, Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Good morning and welcome to New Hope. We are delighted that each and every one of you are here this morning. Our children's church program is underway right now. So if you have uh, any kids up through about third or fourth grade who would like to be a part of our children's church program and uh, they are in the auditorium, they can be dismissed. Uh, it's right back here through uh, this back door uh, uh, back to your right in hallway number three where uh, you see a couple people going right now. So uh, they are welcome to go to that program. And uh, there's some ladies back there that have uh, some special activities and lessons prepared just for their age. But we want to invite uh, or welcome you this morning to Hope on the Hill. And if you are a new attender to New Hope, we want to ask you to, uh, not you, David, you're, you're an old attender in more ways than one. But if you're a new attender to Hope on the Hill, uh, we want to invite you to fill out this guest card and we uh, could have a record of your visit or if there's any way that we can help you because we would love for all of you to be old attenders and uh, so that we can get to know you better and fill out that card and drop it in the offering bucket on your way out. And if you would like to have a contact or a personal visit from Brother Tony, uh, you can let us know via that card, or if you have a prayer request you would like to share or anything like that, you can let us know there's room uh, to do that. But uh, we just so much enjoy uh, everyone being, uh, being here this morning. Uh, those of you that are new and uh, those of you that have been here for a long time, uh, we look forward to gathering together every Sunday morning. And I know that you're going to enjoy the message from Brother Tony this morning. He's continuing in his series on the miracles of Jesus. But uh, before he preaches this morning, I'm going to ask Mr. Mike Kaler and his daughter Brooke to come and share in song with us. Do not cry for me, all of this is exactly how it's supposed to be. I'm right here, can you hear my voice? My love, my love, my Lord, my baby boy has a name. Just know the Father waits for me. God, how can this be your will to have your son and my son kill? Whatever happens, whatever you see, Whatever your eyes tell you has become of me, this is not, it's not the end, I am making all things new. And 
Come of me. This is not, it's not the end. I am making all things new again. Well, turn your Bibles this morning, if you would, to John chapter number 11 and verse number 25 and 26 will be our text verse this morning. John chapter number 11, verse number 25 and verse number 26. And you may recognize this as the traditional resurrection story. You would be completely incorrect because it's not. This is the story of Lazarus. We've been going through the miracles of Jesus in the, um, in the book of John. And we've gone through the idea of uh, the first week, the turning of water into wine, which told us that um, Jesus was the Messiah. We get out of that the idea that this beautiful picture of the church being the bride of Christ. We uh, looked at the second week, the healing of the nobleman's son, how that um, there is a uh, necessity for faith and belief, what God is calling us to do, all that you have, all that you can do is offer him the faith and belief in what he's done for you. We looked at week three at the pool of Bethesda. I love the pool of Bethesda. What it showed us is that Jesus is greater than, I don't know what your problem is today. Uh, the problem of salvation, the problem of the issues of life. God is, Jesus is greater than. We looked at uh, week number four, the feeding of the 5,000 and the compassion of the Lord, how, how that Jesus looked out onto the crowd with compassion. I love who God is, love what God has done, but I love what God is doing, that he looks on his people today. And the Bible says that today after the ascension of Jesus Christ, that he ever lives to make intercession for you, that he cares about what's going on in your life today. That he ever lives to make intercession. We saw him overcome the water. This, this we saw um, an example of how that Jesus Christ um, experiences things with those he has relationship with. I hope today that you're living a Christian life. That you've experienced the resurrection power of God in such a way that you are experiencing um, things with the Lord on a day-to-day -day basis. You're not just going to church, reading a couple devotions, and then going about your business. But rather, you literally experience relational opportunities and events from day to day. We see what happens in the life of a Christian as they experience a relationship with the Lord. And this morning, we're going to see the resurrection 
performing a resurrection. You see, the reason that we, pe- we picked this passage, here in the, the, the story of Lazarus, you may remember the story, um, Jesus and his disciples get a message that a couple days away, Jesus has a friend who is sick. And so Mary and Martha send um, a message to Jesus, the only hope, and says, the one that you love is sick. Come and help. And you'll remember that Jesus waits two days. And in the process of time, Lazarus dies and is buried. And when he gets there, Martha comes out and says, if you would have come earlier, you could have kept this from happening. And Mary comes out later on. Mary had stayed at the house. She was a little upset about the whole situation. And she came and said the same exact thing. If you would have been here, you could have kept Lazarus from dying. And I want you, if you would, to read this text first with me. John chapter number 11 and verse number 25. And Jesus said unto her, I am the resurrection. You see, ordinarily what we do on Resurrection Sunday is we come together and we read about maybe the, the, the women coming to the tomb and not finding him. Maybe we read about the disciples. Maybe we read about the resurrection questions that are asked after the resurrection. We read about what Jesus says and how Jesus rose from the dead and And what an amazing thing. And I love the fact that Jesus rose from the dead. He came, the incarnate God, God in the flesh, came. And that's how valuable we are to him. He came, he lived, he died as a sacrifice for our sins. He rose to conquer sin and death, and that is beautiful. But I want to this morning point something out to you about the resurrection that maybe you've not thought about before and we're going to see it in the story the miracle of raising Lazarus from the dead Jesus comes to the graveside of Lazarus and here's his message his message is I didn't just come to perform a resurrection and I didn't just come to be resurrected but number one I want you this morning to look at the person of Christ Jesus before his resurrection says this, I am the resurrection. I want you this morning to grasp this concept that you cannot separate the person of God from the action of God. That He is what He does. That Jesus is the resurrection. He said, I am the resurrection and I am the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. And then he puts the the angst on them. Do you believe that? I'm the resurrection and life. He that believes in me. Not just I'm going to do something. But before we get into the situation with Lazarus, I need you to get a concept. Before we talk about Christ rose from the dead and the glories of the resurrection Sunday, I want you to understand this. I am the resurrection. Now listen, you and I have an opportunity to know the resurrection. Not just to know of the resurrection. There is a problem when all that we do is know of the resurrection. All that we do is know of Jesus. I want today for you to understand that what you need to know is the resurrection. That you need to know Jesus personally. The person of Jesus. He came to say, I am the resurrection. By the way, he talked of himself and the, and the scriptures talk of God in the same way all through scripture. The Bible says this, for example, in John chapter number one and verse number one, you have those people, maybe even in this auditorium today, who know things about the word of God. And the word of God is awesome. There are some principles in God's word that you can take and apply and they'll work whether or not you know God or not. It is my assumption that the world, and, 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 and uh, uh, it's my opinion that the world is wrong about everything. They're just not good at much that they do. But the Bible says this. So you can take God's word and you can apply it and you, you'll put yourself in a good position. But here's what the Bible says in John chapter number 1 and verse number 1. In the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word, it was God. This sickness is not unto death. Jesus says, but for the glory of God, that the son of God might be glorified thereby. And Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. And when he had heard 
the, therefore that he was six, he, he abode two days. Now, two times it says he loved Lazarus and he loved his sisters. And he says, but he abode there two days, still in the same place where he was. If you'll skip to verse number 15, he says this, I am glad for your sakes that I was not there. I don't know about you, that, that sounds cruel to me. <laughs> because why? Because by this time, Lazarus is dead. And he said, I'm glad for your sake that we didn't get there earlier. I'm glad we didn't leave. We stayed two days. And his sister said, if you'd have been here, then he wouldn't have died. But now you're four days late. You waited two days. And then it took you two days to get here. And you just kind of meandered down here. It was not a two-day journey. To get to Lazarus. If you would have just come. And Jesus said. I am glad. You ever felt like. Maybe the Lord just kind of meandering through your problems. Lord why. What is, what is the hold up. I need you today. If you're the answer. If you're the resurrection and the life. Listen to what he says. The Bible says this. Verse number. 15. I'm glad for your sake. And I was that there. I was not there to the intent that ye may believe. Nevertheless, let us go to him. Verse number 20, the Bible says, Then Martha, um, as soon as she had heard that he was come, she went and met him. But Mary dwelt still at the house. And um, then said Martha unto Jesus, Lord, if thou hast been here, my brother had not died. But I know that even now, whatsoever thou wilt ask God, he will give it thee. And Jesus said unto her, Thy brother shall rise again. Now, she has to be thinking, when? Yeah, I know, because that's what she says. She says, I know he'll rise again at the resurrection. And this is when Jesus said, I am the resurrection. But now skip down to verse number 32. And Mary, when she was come, said the same thing. Lord, if thou had been here, my brother had not died. And here's what I want you to understand. That Jesus is the answer. Him being the resurrection. Because what did he say? I am the resurrection. What is he saying? He's saying, I am the answer to your problem at present. You may not see it. You may not understand it. But I'm glad I wasn't there when you was going through it because you're going to see the glory of God in it. If you'll look, you'll see the glory of God in the circumstance that you did not enjoy. Let me work. I know what I'm doing. There's a lesson of time. A lesson of time. In the situation at present. There's a lesson of time. Even we'll see in Jesus' resurrection. He says I'm the resurrection and the life. In a resurrection that his disciples. If you'll listen. If you'll read the resurrection story. What you're going to read. Is that the disciples at the time of the resurrection. They weren't expecting the resurrection. They, the Bible says at this time. They didn't understand the scriptures. That said he was going to rise again. They were caught off guard. By the whole he's going to rise again thing. But Jesus was the resurrection before his resurrection. So here's the point. Jesus is the answer for the problem you're going through right now. He's already the resurrection in the problem that you're experiencing at present. He's the answer for the problem you don't know you fix and go through. You understand that, that this is not the only problem you're going to go through? I've asked my wife before. I said, when is the last time you and I didn't have some kind of problem? Some kind of situation, some kind of issue. And if we get through whatever issue and situation we're going through right now, this is not the last one. No need to say, whew, I'm glad that's over. Because you are either going through a problem, you just went through a problem, or you just go through a problem. And so what you need is a present answer to the problem you're in and an answer to the future problem you're just go through. It's always going to be something. I'm at the place with my truck to where I don't really don't know what to do. I'm at the place where I don't know if I keep making repairs on it, because if I keep making repairs, I'm really, uh, you know, if I make one more repair, my truck was total, right? Because I'm at that weird place where when I put tires on my truck, I just increase the value. <laughs> and so what we as people do is we try to work our way through it, right? We try to consider and figure it out and, and this will work and I'll get a new truck in and get it in. And, and, and maybe replace it or maybe try to make it last longer. We're always trying to figure stuff out. I just want you to understand Jesus doesn't have to do that. Listen to what he did. The Bible says in verse number 7, and after that, the disciples, uh, he told his disciples in verse number 7, John chapter 11, verse number 7, let us go down to Judea again. And his disciples said in him, Master, 
the Jews of late sought to stone thee there. And are we going to go thither again? Jesus answered and said, Are there not twelve hours in a day? And if any man will walk in the day, he stumbles, because he seeth not the light of the world. But if a man walk in the, in the night, um, he stumbleth, because there's no light in him. In other words, Jesus said, and Jesus is always good at this. He's given these, these answers that seem kind of vague, but he's trying to give them a point. He, they said, look, uh, we don't need to go to Judea because they sought to stone you. They tried to kill us last time, and they're probably still trying to kill us now if we go back. And Jesus said, listen, there, there are 12 hours in a day. If you walk during the light, you won't stumble. If you walk at night, you will. And the disciples were like, so we go in or not? And he's like, yes, let me tell you what I'm trying to tell you. I'm walking in the light. If you're walking with me, you're walking in the light. I'm the light of the world. I know what I'm doing. I'm not guessing. Fact of the matter is, Thomas does this. Thomas says, if you'll skip down to verse number 15, this is where Jesus says in verse number 15 again, I'm glad for your sakes that we were not there to the intent that you may believe. Nevertheless, let us go unto him. Then Thomas, he said, so Jesus says, listen, yes, we're going. And Thomas, you remember his faith, right? I won't believe unless I see and touch. Thomas, which is called Didymus, um, said unto the disciples, um, let's go with him so that we can just all die. You know that Christian? Right? You know that Christian who just is that doomsday Christian? Nothing's ever good. Nothing's ever going to work. This is the Christian who, like, like for those of you, <laughs> some of you are visiting today, just understand this is not how the auditorium ordinarily looks this wasn't the design pattern to have open brick at the top we're remodeling right now so just excuse us um but um we're going through some stuff but there are some christians who when you start stuff they're like oh it'll never work and we don't we'll never raise the money and we don't have enough money and then when you get it done they're like look what we did and that's thomas and so thomas is like fine let's just go to judea we'll just all die together and jesus is like you didn't get the whole light thing? I'm not guessing. I know what I'm doing. I'm the answer for the problem you don't have yet. This is the lesson that we have of time. Let's look at the scope of him being the resurrection. How that there's this idea that, that Jesus being the resurrection is bigger. It's not just, oh, this is a cool concept for the Christian life. Jesus is the resurrection. John chapter number 11, verse number 25. And Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and I am the life. This is huge. What are we saying when we say resurrection? What is that even about? What is resurrection? Resurrection is the opposite of death. What we're here today to celebrate is life. What God has done for you in the resurrection as he has conquered death and called you to real life. There are people in this auditorium today who are still at present experiencing spiritual death. They're still living in it. You're still in your grave clothes. When you were born, you were born in your sin and your trespasses and sin. You were born in this sinful condition. God has been calling you. He's paid that debt and he's called you to receive that sin debt and to move from death to life. But it is amazing to me how we just get comfortable living in the grave. Like, hey, I think I can make this work. Well, I mean, you can. <laughs> but why? God has called you into something so much better. Listen to what the Bible says in verse number 23. I am the resurrection and I am the Life, I am real life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. John chapter number 11 and verse number 11, the Bible says, These things said he, then, and after that he saith unto him, um, Our friend Lazarus sleeps, and I go to awake him out of sleep. Verse number 12. And then his disciples said, Lord, if he's asleep, he's doing good. He's getting better. Howbeit Jesus spoke of his death. And they thought that he spoke of, being, of taking rest and sleep. And uh, then spake Jesus plainly unto them, saying, Lazarus is dead. Verse number 26. This is what Jesus tells Martha and Mary. 
Whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Do you understand the, the scope of what resurrected life is in the believer? I don't feel like you're quite as excited about this as I am. So I'm going to give you just a minute to mull in it. What resurrected life is, what living in the life of Christ is. It's more than just, okay, I'm not going to hell. It is, it is the life that I live today. I'm not waiting for the sweet by and by. I'm talking about he has res- given me resurrected life in the nasty now and now. The people say, brother Tony, can you believe what's going on in the world? What do you think about what's going on in the world? I'm like, what world? I appreciate there's some crazy stuff going on in the world. Not my world, bro. You gonna burn it down? Burn it down. I ain't planning to stay here. Not my world. Not what I live for. Not where my joy comes from. The Bible says in the book of Hebrews, people who talk like this, resurrected life people, they speak plainly that they seek a country. They've traded citizenship. These people who have experienced a different life understand what life is, what real life is. John chapter number 17, verse number 1, These words spake Jesus and lifted up his eyes to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify thy Son, that thy Son may glorify thee, um, as thou hast given him power over all flesh, and hath, um, um, that he should give eternal life to as many as thou hast given him. This is what he says, verse number three. And this is life eternal. Are you ready? Are you sitting down? This is awesome. And this is life eternal. That they may know thee, the only true God, and Jesus Christ whom thou hast sent. That's eternal life. To know him today. To experience him today. To enjoy the life, the resurrected life of the Christian life to. Day. That is the scope of life. And lastly, we'll cover this. Um, number four, the opportunity that you have. And the opportunity that I, that I have to engage in this eternal life. Wouldn't it be incredible that you had this opportunity and missed it? You ever missed an awesome opportunity? My brother and I one time went to a fishing tournament at uh, Lake Fork. There were over 400 fishermen at an API fishing tournament. We fished the tournament. It was a tough day of fishing, and I think there were like two fish out of 400 people caught over the slot. So we went, and they had this big crawfish bowl and big shrimp bowl, and we ate and had a good time. And they said, listen, nobody leave. They said, we have, um, we have uh, trailers full of giveaways. There's giveaways for everybody. And so uh, they were giving stuff away and raffling. They were, uh, had every, everybody that got there had a, had a ticket and was in the tournament had a ticket. And, and he said, look, there's, there's, there's more than enough giveaways. And so I'm sitting there. And, uh, and there were two people didn't get, didn't win. <laughs> now, I don't know who the other guy was. But there were two people I saw sitting there still had tickets in their hand. Me and one other dude. I'm like, <laughs> they were giving rods and reels and jackets and, and all this stuff. And I'm like, which why I quit drinking Cokes at first. I don't remember how many of you remember um, back when you could drink a Coke, you'd open it up and you was an automatic winner. You won a Coke and won this and won that. I mean, I got so tired of being told I was not a winner. I'm like, I'm, 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 on, I'm drinking Pepsi. <laughs> it felt like you just missed the opportunity. Guys, don't miss this opportunity. What an incredible opportunity to get to experience resurrected life. Jesus didn't come to have resurrected life so we could have Easter. He, or that you could understand or, or know or have an intellectual assent to a concept of Easter. He came so you could experience resurrected life. So you could have life. And have it more abundantly. Listen to what the Bible says in John chapter number 11 and verse number 25. And Jesus said unto her, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Believest thou this? D.L. Moody said, one day you'll hear that D.L. Moody is dead. Don't believe it. 
on that day I'll be more alive than I have ever been. This is why the Christian, when they have a funeral, it's different. We celebrate it. We understand what leaving this world for something else is. That's why I've already planned my funeral. You don't want to miss it. We're going to talk about some concepts that are real and important and valuable. There are some things that we used to do at funerals as Christians to celebrate what God has done for us. It will never be more important than that day when you realize, hey, this person has died. Don't believe that business. What do you think you'll see at my funeral? You'll see what is left, what is waiting to be resurrected because of his resurrection. And to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. And now we're like, uh, just cremate me and y'all have a barbecue or something. I'm like, uh-uh. You don't have to come. And I understand that the amount of people at my funeral will be determined greatly by the weather. And that's fine. But the funeral I do have will be about the resurrected life of Jesus Christ. And I believe it and I celebrate it. The opportunity that you have. Jesus says, whosoever believeth in me will never die. In John chapter 11, verse number 44 and 48, you have two groups of people. Some people said, I believe it, and they received. And some people believed not, and they went with the Pharisees. John chapter 4, verse number 14 says, But whosoever drinketh of the water that I shall give shall never thirst again, but the water that, um, that I shall give him shall be a well of, of life, a, wa a wellspring of life, um, springing up into eternal life. John chapter number 5, verse number 24. Verily, verily, I say unto you, um, he that believeth my words and believeth on him that sent me shall have everlasting life and shall not come into condemnation, but is past, present tense, from death to life. And that, friend, is what the resurrection is all about. And that is why we still have altar calls. Why? Do we still have altar calls? You know, it just blows my mind that, that sometimes we as church do away with the altar call because the opportunity, the call of Christ, behold, I stand at the door and knock. If you today want to come to know Jesus Christ, you can. If you want to experience the resurrected life today, you can. The call is for you. Whosoever believeth in me hath everlasting life. Come unto me. The Bible says as we stand together, as our candidate for baptism goes back, today we celebrate resurrected life. If you don't know the Lord today as your personal Savior, this will be a great day for you to receive Christ. If you do, this would be a great day just to say, Lord, thank you. Whatever the need is today, as a musician sing, you come.
seated. i tell you what I love about the Christian life. Somebody said, you know, Brother Tony, I wish the Lord would come to me and just show me, um, you know, what he has for me. I just want to encourage you with this before the baptism. He did. He did come to you. He did show you. The next move belongs to you. And thank the Lord that the invitation is never closed. Amen. As they prepare for the baptism, I want to share some announcements with you. Next Sunday, April the 11th, uh, we have some important changes coming up. Next Sunday is our return to our previous schedule uh, to one church service in the sun on Sunday morning. So our schedule will be uh, 10 o'clock Sunday school and 11 o'clock our morning service. And uh, we have been having a breakfast on Sunday mornings. That was at 8 o'clock which was pretty early for some folks, or, uh, and uh, if you came to the second service, you probably didn't come to the breakfast, but uh, you may want to take advantage of that. There will be a breakfast served at 9 o'clock on Sunday morning, and then Sunday school at 10, and the morning service at 11. So that begins next Sunday, April 11th. Also beginning next Sunday uh, at 5 p.m., we'll be doing an eight-week interactive Bible study in the fellowship hall, 5 to 6.30 p.m., we'll be showing um, the first season of The Chosen, followed by a uh, small group uh, Bible study discussing each uh, uh, episode, beginning with episode number one next Sunday night. And so uh, be uh, plan to be a part of that. If you'd like, we'll meet in the fellowship hall for the first part of that session for the video part. And our ladies' ministry is going to serve popcorn, and you're welcome to bring your own soft drinks or water, what you'd like to drink. And uh, we'll keep the food and drinks in the fellowship hall, and then we'll divide up for, for the, uh, is he mocking me? <laughs> See? But that's all right. I know he loves me. So uh, that's why I like to pick on David, that he knows I love him. So, uh, but anyway... I uh, want you to keep that in mind, and then also you'll see in your bulletin that next Sunday begins our marriage and family class that Brother Tony will be leading, so I encourage you to go to hopeonthehill.net, our website, hopeonthehill.net, or if you have the Engage platform on your phone and sign up for Brother Tony's marriage and family class that will begin next Sunday at 10 a.m., you'll want to take part in that class. Uh, I know that you'll enjoy it. It'll be an encouragement to you and a help to you. So sign up online for that class. Uh, and after the baptism, I will give you some instructions for those who are staying for the Easter egg hunt. Brother Tony. Amen. Well, uh, our small group will be meeting at the um, with the uh, chosen thing. So we're looking forward to that. And... Um, so if you'd like to join the young adult small group, and I'd say young adult-ish, um, you're welcome to come up and, and hang out with us. If you don't have a small group, you're welcome to come up and we'll find you somebody to hang out with. Um, so important, though, that we understand that the Christian life is not just in, um, uh, it's not just in thought. 
It is in both word and deed. There's a next step for you to take, whatever that next step is. Um, I thank the Lord that God allowed me to come to know him in relationship early in my life. But the relationship, the growth in the relationship, the movement in the relationship has never stopped. It never, never will stop. And so I don't know where you are. Maybe you don't know the Lord. And the next step is for you to receive the Lord in relationship. Um, would love to talk to you about that. Um, maybe the next step for you is this public, um, public display, this uh, public profession of faith. Um, but whatever it is, this maybe it's discipleship and learning and growing and maybe it's serving, maybe whatever it is. Um, friend, uh, I, I would encourage you just to think about it in terms of whatever other relationships you have. Um, if you put as much effort into the relationship that you have with your significant other or with your family that you put with Christ, what would it look like? And then we wonder why it doesn't look very good. Um, and so I'm so proud, always so proud to see people taking steps forward and people encouraging me to take steps forward in my relationship with the Lord. So Adam, come on down, man, if you would. And Adam um, made a salvation decision last Sunday. And man, we're so proud of this guy. He has been a huge help in our small group. And so um, uh, Adam, in obedience to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and your public profession of faith in him, I baptize you, my brother, in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, buried in the likeness of his death, raised to walk in newness of life. Amen. I am sure Brother Scott has some more instructions. Yes, I do. So just before we dismiss, uh, if your uh, kids are going to participate in the Easter egg hunt, the plan is uh, you can go meet up with your kids out here in the fellowship hall. If they do not have an Easter basket, we will provide them with a basket. And then you can go down the hill to the grass area that you will see is marked off with colored ribbon. Um, the, the kids seven years old through sixth grade uh, can uh, line up around the perimeter of the large area and the smaller cordoned off area is for the younger kids. So the older kids need to stay out of the smaller area and don't run over the little kids. All right? Uh, and then we will begin the, uh, well, we, we got time because uh, it's about six minutes away, and we're going to start at 12.30. That'll give time for er all the little kids and everybody to get down there uh, around the area. Brother Ed Parks will be uh, down there with the bullhorn to give the ready, set, go, but we're going to begin at 12.30 because it's quite possible that we have families coming from other churches to participate in the Easter egg hunt, and we told them 12.30. But, uh, but we have plenty of time to make your way, to get your kids and make your way down the hill. And so uh, stay uh, behind the perimeter till you get the ready, set, go. And if you have the, uh, the younger kids in the small cordoned off area and the older kids in the larger area, and then we'll be good to go. So you are dismissed.